Mesti my first buy is uh, cup chai. It's like in, I, I bought a cup chai in 1995. And then in 2000, my dad need the bike so much, so I gave him the, the bike. So I I was thinking I, I don't have any transport. So I think what is the cheapest bike that I can buy, but it's going to look cool when you go skating, you know? So I bought a Vespa. I bought a Vespa for 400 ringgit and then I restored the Vespa for 1,500 and then I used that Vespa to go skating, to go everywhere, you know, like pin and kel, pin and kel, pin and kel, using my Vespa and then from that, I went to Malacca for a skate event using my Vespa and then I saw Lambreta. From that point, I see, I told, myself, I told myself that I don't want a Vespa anymore, I want a Lambretta. So from that point, I start restoring a Lambretta. And then I learned from my friends, Asiong and Aliong. That guy was like, teach me how to restore a Lambretta. And after that, I restore a Lambretta to the original condition. And then I sell it to a collector. I'm not selling the Lambretta to a user, I'm selling to a, a collector. And then from that point, I think that Restoring Lambretta is easy because you're used to it, you restore a lot of Lambretta and then a lot of collectors buy Lambretta from me at a high price but then I think it's not a challenge anymore so I start discovering a new bike you know like I never into into cars I was I was a bike person because I think like uh, four wheels move the body Two wheels move the soul, something like that. Yeah, I know, right? So I start, I start discovering how how good is other bike rather than a Lambretta. So I bought my first Ali in in 2000, 2009, and then I spent all of my money customize all the parts the Ali and then I send the bike to to the most best bike builder in Malaysia and then from that point I when my bike is is uh, is is done so I take it back and then I dismantle it. From that point I start studying how to build a bike. Yeah it's all it's, I I study how I study and learn how to build a bike from from my bikes from YouTube from internet forums and from service and then when you get we get all our salary and then my brother go and buy the skateboard and I saw him skating and then I feel like it's it's fun and it suits me you know like I don't know how to play the good I'm not a good footballer do you know like at that time before was like so into badminton you know football and everything it's like but I when I see Skateboard is is it looks fun and it, looks, it suits me, you know. Like and then when I jump on a skateboard and then I just like you know like I feel like it's it belongs to myself. You know? Yeah, Penang Day was fun, you know. It's, it was fun. It's people there, it's like skateboarders there. They all they all skateboarding because they love skateboarding, you know. Like, it's not because of the trends or something like that, but we go skateboard together because we love skateboarding so much. And then we we rent a house, we stay together also. We have uh, at that time I have four buddies and we rent a house, rent an apartment, and then we call it a skate house. You know, like every week a lot of skateboarders will come and then they hang out there and then we have a party and then. And then we go skate, find new spots, go skateboarding again, come back, sleep, have a drink, something like that. And then tomorrow we go skate again, you know? All the skateboarding days. Penang, Penang skateboarding day is like the best thing ever happened to me. Yeah. We go street skating together, we go all the famous street spots in the world, and we go. And then I go skateboarding with all my idols. Yeah? It was 2004 when I was competing in, in Summer S Game in LA. I was I'm joining the competition and then skate with all the pros that go with all my skate idol that I saw them in skate videos and then I saw them in magazine and then I suddenly I 
I compete with them, you know, like, that is the best experience in my skateboarding life. Man. When I was in the skate industry, I call it the skate industry, and then I think, like, I was, I was young, and then I was aggressive, you know, like, yeah, I want to make money, you know, and it was fun making money in skateboarding, you know, like, at that time, people think that skateboarding is only a hobby, only a seasonal sport, you know, it's, it's not, it's not a real thing, you know, and then, when that time, so I was young, I, would, I make, I make a lot of money in skateboarding, you know, I design skate park, I do events, everything, and then suddenly, I think, like, I make more enemy then I make more friends, you know, like, because you want to make money, you have to, like, my motto at that time is like, you kill or be killed, something like that. I have a way to, to make sure that they don't get it, you know. Sometimes that people is my skate friend. People call me greedy, but I call it business is business strategy. I mean, if you have a good strategy, you plan a good strategy, and you can win it, something like that. So, to, to make sure that, that the project will go successful because they don't have the expertise. I have the expertise, I'm good with mechanical engineering, I'm good with AutoCAD, I'm good with planning. I studied mechanical engineering, I'm graduate as a mechanical engineering. Then I start Abba and Sun School in 2000, 2012. 2012. From that point is that uh, it's Abba in Malay is for father. So it's Abba and Sun, people think that it's me and my sons. It's actually me and my father because my father teach me how to do all the how to work with tools you know my father was was a sewing machine repairer and a clock repairer like that. yeah and then he teach me how to, to to use tools and then to recognize tools to what kind of tool to use on that that thing that thing you know? so this this is the, the business that I tribute to my father actually so I start in 2012. We start with the, I start restoring a lambretta as a business, and then I start a uh, Harley customization. is is focusing on more on Harley. It's not a Japanese bike because I'm not into Japanese bike, and then I'm not used to it. Not so I'm not focusing on Japanese Indian. So mostly is uh, Harley, British bike, and lambretta. And then we start. Uh, so I, I was a collector also, a vintage part collector. So I have a lot of vintage bike and a lot of vintage parts. So me and my friends also a collector. So we want a gallery. So when we want a gallery, so we plan to have a gallery, but we want people to come in and they can sit on the gallery and look at parts. You know. So we think if they want to sit longer, stay longer at the gallery, they have. It must be a cafe, you know, like good coffee, good food. So, me and my friends, I partner with my friend Saifu and start a gallery, and then I partner with my friend Fadil to start a motor cafe. That's how the motor cafe is born, and that's how the motor gallery is. is, is yeah, yeah. I want people to know that I can do everything. You know, <laughs> I can do. I do good in skateboarding, and I do good in in building bikes. You know, like. You know, like, when I do things, I, I take it seriously. So I want people to look me like that. So I want my business to be known not only in, in Malaysia, but, but in the world. So when they come to Malaysia, they want to go to my cafe. They want to visit my motor works, you know, and they appreciate my, my bikes that I built. And then from scratch, and the bike that I helped, Modify me. Yeah, I want people to know me as a skateboarder who know how to big bike. My friends, my family, they love what I'm doing, but sometimes they think that I'm taking it too much, you know, like, but the things like, I was, I love what I'm doing, you know, like, yeah, yeah, now they, they know that it's something to be proud of. Skateboarding makes me enjoy, you know, and then forget all my problems and then I've been doing skateboarding for 24 years and it's, it's, my, it's in my blood, something like that, yeah, skateboarding, yeah.